and besides the nice things said already, I'm also the chief product officer at Move Guides now, a company that recently acquired Telpo. But picture a 26-year-old graphic designer. They get off an airplane. You open up your computer. Uh, you continue working for the same client that where you're working for at your source where you boarded the plane. Maybe you wish, had you wish you would have worked on the plane as well, but the Wi-Fi sucked. And now you're in this new city, and you have a car waiting for you. You're making the income exactly the way you were doing 8,000 kilometers away, and you have a place to stay for the evening. So that's like a very typical situation in this sort of modern work environment, if I hope you agree. What's special about that, though, is that by that moment in time, that graphic designer does not have to know what the name of the city is. So nowhere in the human history we've been at the point where you can so swiftly change your location, get to a new place, not interrupt your normal life, set up everything you need to actually stay there while not even knowing what the city's name is. And that's, that's what technology has done in the last decade, so in a, in a way that is just getting into our brains now in a more systematic way, even though many, many people are living like that. More precisely, about the billion people today are living in a place other than the one they were born in. And it's roughly a split of a quarter of a billion people have moved abroad, and three quarters have moved domestically inside of a large country. So inside of US, inside of China, inside of India, you have much more internal mobilization. Or inside EU, this country and country movement is somewhere in between. And I would even argue uh, that this number is grossly underestimating, because I don't think that graphic designer who might work six months in another city is actually included in that, because usually these sort of stats are based on a change of permanent residency and some, some relatively slow-moving uh, macroeconomic numbers. The other thing that is interesting about that uh, two, uh, one billion people is that over the last 15 years, that number has been growing steadily at the rate of 2.4% year on year. And why that is special is our world's population is growing at 1.2% a year. So basically, the number of people mobile, the pace of that growth is double the pace of, uh, of humans on the planet. So it's an, definitely an increasing trend. So three years ago, we observed that trend and living that life ourselves. Like I've lived in four countries, and I spend my life uh, in a typical year, uh, maybe half a year I'm on the road. And so were my co-founders. And we started this company called Teleport. And what Teleport does, and you can go to teleport.org and still use it today, um, is, is a search engine where people can go in and say that, given who I, uh, who I am, what I want to do, where should I be? If I'm a software developer and want to make more money, where should I move? If I'm a nurse and I want to save money on rent, if I'm uh, a writer and I want to be anywhere because I can work anywhere, but I want to give the better, best education for my kids, like what are the places that I could choose on? And we built software tools for that. And now, through the history of Teleport, we have had over 300,000 people who have populated their profiles and tried to use the software, and thousands of them have actually moved to the places that, that they have. When people move, it's actually a bigger deal than just like people fulfilling their personal um, uh, sort of goals and and uh, and having a um, maybe a ten thousand dollar bump in their annual income or lowering the costs. If you look at the aggregate impact, like one way to do that is to flip the, the switch and uh, flip the side and look at the uh, what is the impact to the companies employing them. And what it comes out is that two hundred and thirty billion dollars are spent every year by companies just relocating the people just trying to attract work from, workforce from abroad uh, or choosing that, OK, we're going to open up this new plant in a new country. Let's send a few managers. Or we're running this Wall Street bank, and our Hong Kong branch uh, lacks this options trader. Let's move two people from New York to there. And that sort of internal movement in companies attracting new people to come in uh, is a $230 billion market, and it's called corporate relocation. The reason. I'm laying this out for you, is that that market, that corporate relocation market, that mobility market, is this classic space which a software entrepreneur, like these thousands of people here, will look at and says that this is utterly broken. We can fix it with software. The glo globe that you see is 
a visualization of all the moves that now at Move Guides, which Teleport is a part of, we have served over the last few years, helped them to get from A to B using software. And we're doing that in a space which, just to get some sense of that, there are a number of $500 million companies operating in this space. They're typically 50 or 60 years old. They uh, have people who are really good at understanding what it takes to move somebody from Amsterdam to Helsinki, and they need know how to call a shipping company and, and operate on a visa. But, but, but they do that by phones, and they send emails. And it's like this, this, this old school, hard market of very complex problems that humans who are very talented in that space have been solving manually. And so what I want to talk to you about today is that how you take a segment, like there's this massive trend of people moving, there is this um, existing industry that moves billions of dollars of value just to relocate people on this planet Earth. How do you look at that as a software problem? And what are the things that you can do and what we are doing at Move Guides to sort of change that and disrupt that industry? So basically, uh, there are three things when I look at an industry like that. And in my past, uh, I had the joy of jo uh, being with Skype for the seven earliest years. And th it's kind of the similar way how we looked at the uh, telecom industry or how you go into an old incumbent industry and t try to change things. And I would argue, or the examples I'm going to bring are data, then what can you do with integrations once you have the data moving, and then what does it do to the decision making? So first off, data. Uh, when MoveGuides acquired Teleport back in March, we started integrating our products. And as I said, we were building software that, uh, and, and data sets were in order to help people to move to a place. We had indexed about 800 dimensions of cost and quality of life data, about 250 cities on this planet. So what we did was, over the last six months, we've taken all of that data and built that into the tools that corporations can use so that the way you can now navigate where your people are, where should they be working, is that uh, for example, in San Francisco Bay Area, in New York, and a dozen other cities, we can tell you that in relation to the office that you have in that city, this is the most cost and commute optimal place for your employee to live. So we can go down to like a very tiny kilometer by kilometer cells and pinpoint this is the best place for your employees to be. This is the optimum of what they need to do for work compared to what the life quality will be, compared to how much time they will wasting on a commute and all of that. And because it's all software and it's all data, we can run millions of those queries and do that fully automatically. Uh, so, or any employee can play with their destiny and have these ideas. Secondly, integrations. One thing that you see in these old incumbent industries is that because people operate manually, they take notes on post-it notes and send emails, and data is not stored anywhere in a structured way, then throughout this complex space of things that need to happen, when one person moves from one country to another, uh, you, it's super hard to get the single overview of what's happening. So this entire $230 million uh, billion dollar business of moving people around, shipping stuff and temporary housing and all this sort of logistical complexities, that's just one part of the story. Because if you want to send a fin to Saudi Arabia, you also need to figure out the visa. In order to figure out the visa, you might need to know if they're married or not. If they're married or not, you might need to know what's the nationality of that partner, and oh, by the way, what's the gender of that partner, because that might change completely how that process works. And that data lives somewhere on paper or is in silos today, so it doesn't exist anywhere. Uh, another example of that is tax. When you are a knowledge worker who's, who's spending time in, in, let's say, eight countries a year, there are different countries of different claims on your residency and the residency of your company. So my personal hypothesis is that in the next decade, that's going to be a massive industry that's going to be disrupted itself, is nation state taxing. Because when we look at the hundreds of thousands of users moving around the world, like, like these people will not be taxable if you only look at their physical location. You have to understand where they're doing the business, where are the customers, where are they living their lives. But until that hasn't been solved, somehow you need to navigate this complex mess of taxes. And there are different scenarios when you're moving people around, you need to understand ahead what taxation will look like. You need to be able to estimate costs. You need to be able to say that, OK, if we send one more sales guy to Moscow, we're gonna, our companies become a Russian resident, so we need to pay all these other taxes in Russia. So, so all of these complexities need to be managed by software, we believe. And eventually, this data needs to come together. 
So once you digitize all of those angles and once you integrate all of those companies and all of these law firms and tax firms and big four consultants and everybody who's operating with these complex data sets, like once you bring those into a single software platform, a beautiful things can happen that completely like change the way this industry works. And what will happen is that all of a sudden, this entire industry that is focused on how do we get the person from A to B? Like if you talk to anybody in corporate relocation space and try to get any help for your move, the questions are asked that, OK, so how many people are you going to move from Europe to US next year? Like these transactions, it's these A to B moves. But if you talk to the humans on the move, it's not how they think. Like, this act of getting on a plane and getting your stuff shipped is not hard. What's hard is what happens before the move, the decisions of where should I be, where should I go, where will my family have the best life, where will I have the best income that I can deserve. Like all of those questions before are way more important. And then every time you move to a new country, there is all this life that happens afterwards. So this interesting shift that we're seeing by implementing our software into this world is that instead of people thinking about these transactions of getting from A to B, how can you start thinking about what will my life look like next year? How much time will I spend in these locations? And what's better for me? Should I, if I live in Paris, should I move to London for that job? Or should I commute one week uh, a month? And when you think on a corporate level, the large Fortune 500 organization might have 20,000 people on the road at any given time. So having this oversight of what's happening with my workforce, where are they, what are the implications of that, and what is the more, like getting into sort of fancy machine learning AI topics, what is the better place for my people to be? Where can they add more value to my organization and live happier work lives? Like these are the kinds of questions that you only, start uh, so, uh, you only will be able to answer once you've sorted out this complexities of this transactional world underneath that is happening today. And the beauty of that is that we live in this world where every day brings news about some country trying to build walls and some country trying to block other people not coming there, and then some aggressive little happy countries trying to attract more talent and this sort of fluidity of people happening around the globe. The more hassle, the more complexity, the more pain, the more political turmoil, the more terror, the more, more all the scary things in the world, we believe that the more people need actually modern technology and software to help them to make the right decisions in this complex world. When you wake up in the morning and you don't know which country you can enter with your passport this week, like how do you navigate that? And that's something that we, we use software to solve for both individuals on the move, but also for the tens of thousands of organizations around the world who need to somehow manage their mobile workforce. So this is my email. If you are interested in chatting more about this topic or joining that, that effort, uh, then I would love to hear from you. Thank you.